Hello and welcome to Swift Goose. Today we're going to look at how to quickly model JSON objects and generate URL session task extensions for your API calls using the app.quicktype.io URL so that you can quickly jump in to checking your Bitcoin price or whatever API call you want to use. So the first thing we want to do is go to Safari and we'll go to our blockchain API and I'll provide a link for that in the description. And we're going to scroll down here and we want to find tickers, symbol, and price. So we'll click get and try it out. And for now, we're just concerned about BTC USD. So let's execute that. And you see here we have our URL that we're going to grab for later. But then we also have what the JSON return was. So let's click that copy button. And we're going to paste it into our second tab here, which allows us to instantly parse JSON in any language. So let's go here and we'll change this to be a name crypto and we'll paste in our code here on the right make sure that we have swift selected but then also select url session task extensions and that's going to give us our crypto symbol and ticker and all the information our coding keys our json decoder and our encoder and then our codable tasks so let's copy all that come back into xcode i'm going to create a new file command n and we'll just call this crypto and paste in our code. And then the other thing we need is a class that will actually call the API. So let's make another new file and just call this API. And in here, we're gonna create a class called blockchain oops, API. Let's establish a default URL session and then let's make a function that will actually run the API call. Static func, and we'll just call it get BTC. And for a string, we'll make a default string for now and just call it BTC string and set it equal to BTC. And then for our completion handler, we wanna make this escaping our crypto that we just made. So our crypto element inside of our crypto.swift. So grab that struct. and then a string, and then we'll return void. First thing we need to do is get our URL. So guard let URL, URL, and from a string. And again, let's go back to our blockchain API and grab that URL. This inside of a string. And actually, we don't even need this. So let's just get rid of it. Else, we'll just return here. And now back in our crypto file, we can call our URL session dot crypto task. That's going to be the one that does all the meat and potatoes. So crypto task with completion handler in our URL is going to be our URL. Hit enter here and we'll just put in BTC. Whoops. Just want this to be BTC response. And then error will be error. For actual code, we'll say guard let BTC equals BTC and error equals nil. Else, and we'll just print out our error in case there is one and then return. And then finally on our main queue, we will run our completion handler. And we'll do completion BTC and error localized description. Don't forget to call resume on our task so that we actually run the API call. Now let's go back to our view controller and call our get BTC static function. So every time the button is pressed, we want to call blockchain API dot get BTC completion. And we'll call this BTC and this will be error. And let's make one other guard statement here to set BTC equal to BTC once our API call is done. Else, and we'll just put a return here. So if we've made it this far, now we have access to the actual data that was returned from the API. So we can say let last trade price equals BTC last trade price. And same thing for our 24 hour price. 
24 hours equals BTC dot price 24 hour. To get our percent change, let's do let percent change equals last trade price minus price 24 hours divided by price 24 hours times 100. And then for our string, let's actually format it. So percent string equals format and percent 2f. At this point, we can set our string values for our text field. And one other thing to do before we run our code, we have to click on the top level app here and go to signing and capabilities. And then here under app sandbox, we have to allow incoming and outgoing connections. If you don't do this, then you're gonna get an error every time you try to run the API call. Let's go back to our view controller and run the code and see what we get. So if we check our BTC price, we get 44,800. That's obviously not formatted and neither is the percent change. It might be nice to have a plus or a minus here, but if you run it again, you can keep checking. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and hit the dinner bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching.